Shio, welcome to Cherokee Kitchen. I'm Robin Callahan, Program Director with Cherokee Choices. Cherokee Choices is a chronic disease prevention program for the Eastern Band of the Cherokee Indians under the Public Health and Human Services. So today we are honored to have Miss Onita Bush here mm -hmm. with us today. And um, we have a very special treat with some live crawfish um, that she caught herself this morning, and or yesterday maybe, yeah. um, as well as some spice wood tea. So Miss Onita is um, a member of the Snowbird community and is a community health representative um, with the Public Health and Human Services Division. Um, she is also a first descendant Cherokee speaker um, and is, has played a huge role in the language development, language development with public health and human services, and um, especially with the snowbird community. Um, so very recently, um, she was awarded the a Spirit Alignment Leadership Program um, and was honored as a carrier of indigenous community values, memory, and wisdom. So um, only seven individuals in the entire nation received this award. So um, congrats. Thank you. So um, share, um, before we get started with our crawfish, mm -hmm. um, share a little bit about um, your award, if you wouldn't mind. Just, um, I know you said it was earlier, a huge interview mm -hmm. process as far as, um, some of the questions that you had to answer. Yeah, uh, most of the things that I'm having to, uh, that how I got the award is my knowledge of uh, traditional foods within our Cherokee tribe and how to prepare foods and how to prepare uh, teas, how to hunt them, how to find them, how to gather them right instead of going out there just totally destroying the plants. And that is what I'm really most concerned about is people going out in the woods and just taking, not a little, but taking it all and not leaving enough for the rest of us. So that was mostly my thing about it. And also uh, the program that we're doing also that I'm into, and uh, we have a couple of girls and that's midwifery, hunting do lushka, doing shting, the, the doula project and we're hoping to bring that project that piece of history back to our Cherokee tribe right here in the Koala boundary that's what I'm most <clears throat> wanting to get back done very honorable and uh, much much needed work so you should be very proud proud of that Miss Amita um, so we have a, a little crazy crawfish um, swimming around in this bowl um, so, uh, if so, take it away, Miss Onita. What what's our step? If we want to cook cook crawfish, where do we find them? Um, how do we how do we kill them and clean them, and then how do we cook them? Well, you find the crawfish in freshwater branches, and right here, at this crawfish right here, it was found right up here at the in the village in Cherokee, at the Cone Lefty. Uh, I was wanting to show you the difference of uh, crawfish. Uh, first off, you take the back off. I'm just going to show you what what it looks like that you get from the casinos and different areas uh, on the back of these crawfish. And this in here has been cooked. You see the stuff right there? That's the stuff that's, uh, I guess it's guts and everything. You take the little uh, flap off in the back here, take it off first thing, and you can see all that's inside of it. That's what you'll be eating when you go out to the restaurants and all you can eat seafood buffets. And even right here, there's a vein right here, 
and it's the uh, where it has a bowel movement. It has a black vein coming out. And this in here, if Robin wants to kill it, she can kill it. <laughs> or if she wants to clean it, she can clean it. You want well, to clean it? What are, the, what are the steps here? I don't know what I'm getting okay. into here. You grab the crawfish right on the back. See, it's right on the back. Okay. You grab it right there All on the right. back. Okay. You gather up the... You gather up the claws and see right there's your claws. You okay. gather them up and then you you pull this back right here, the back of the crawfish right here. Well, pull it lot. back. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a quick way and of you, you got it. Let's see it. Okay. And this is a quick way of cleaning out the crawfish right here. And see right there's the insides mm -hmm. of it. You clean it all out. And you get that inside all cleaned out right there. And that's the guts of the crawfish. You can see the guts coming out right there. Okay, that's a clean crawfish. Okay, you go for the back. Right here, you'll see three little spots right here. Here's one fin, there's the other fin, and it might got me, <laughs> did you see that? And so, but you clean that right there. You loosen that up, and that's the middle fin. So do you actually take it off? Take you actually middle? take, okay. it, take it, off, it off, yeah. Okay. You take it off and you have to kind of give it a little tug. Right here is the vein. Can you see that? That little vein. Hit nine, hush. Can nuggly? Hit nine. On did you get, huh? Go on to nuggle. Yo, hit nine. No one had nugget, huh? No one do. Shan itch. What overly? Hit nine. Dick and nuggle go. Shan D. Dick should be hit nine. Who lost your cheese done? Hit nine, cheese done, chick. Hit nine, do, dick she oak. Oak shanty, it's gonna go go. And this is the poop vein right here. <clears throat> and. Should we save that for dessert, right? Yeah, save it for dessert, save it for afterwards. And. Sorry. So, nutritionally, the great thing about crawfish is. There's no hormones, there's no antibodies, it's all natural. Lean meat, it is a shellfish if you have any shellfish allergies. But um, great source of protein, definitely. So if you wanna cook the crawfish, I don't even know how to turn that on. I got it for you. You put a little bit of oil. I use canola oil. Canola oil is good. And, and I, you could either use uh, flour or you could use cornmeal. John Histon de Jadoli, stick at go, oh, go, gosh, you ask go. Penna, yeah, you to do lay, they shall go to just that they hit none, they shall go to stick at the good egg at this go. Hit none, they, Ujales, no, like you to do lay, Ujales, they yoke, oh, she gave this go. I got this go, and none yoke, Ujales, Jig got hug luck, don't none, they want the. You can roll it around in flour. I roll it around in cornmeal. This is what most Indians used was cornmeal. None. Shall I go do? And then most of them used flour. I like to use flour mostly because it sticks good together and the cornmeal has a tendency to fall off. As you can see, the crawfish is a little bit still alive yet. You can see its legs still moving around. Shall I go to the gut I'm going to use the flour. And you take the flour and just shake it around. And shake it around your crawfish. New Onega de cheese trying to get, huh? None. This didn't do it. Won't you want in? The crawfish will be green when you first kill it.
just like this and here I had a lot of green in it but once you put the uh, crawfish in the pan you'll see it start turning a pretty red and once the crawfish is done that's you'll see that pretty red then and it's ready to eat and this in here does not want to die <laughs> so but it will be turn a little bit red once it starts cooking and that's it on my crawfish but <laughs> these here you buy from the store yeah and these were already now these were louisiana crawfish but um these are in the frozen section um you can get them at food lion but these were from bilo there in franklin so um wonderful so great um great little treat to eat and you can also a great thing to drink or eat these with is mm -hmm. to drink them with spice wood yeah tea correct mm -hmm. okay so while this is um frying up um, we will transition over and take a look at our spice wood tea, um, and I'll, I'll I'll just switch our, and you can I'll let you dive in, Miss Omina, and so we have some beautiful spice wood that Miss Omina um, had picked this morning. And you can see the beautiful yellow buds there. Spice wood has its own unique smell. When you uh, first break it off, you can smell it. And it's a real sweet smelling uh, texture to it. And that's how you can see it, recognize it in early spring by these little buds that's right here. Later on, it has them pretty green satiny looking leaves. And then that's how you can tell that. And the most is when the sap is all the way up in the spice wood. When you break it off, you don't even have to stick it close to your nose. You can, it, the smell will waft up to you. And that's how you can tell you got good spice wood. I got some boiling right here, but it's not boiled enough. And my crawfish is still cooking. <laughs> so, but yeah when you first get the spice wood out you pour it in a glass and you can tell it turns slightly brown i walked out the camera <laughs> so traditionally um as, as far as uses for spice wood um can you share just a little bit about um what you grew up with when any kind of medicinal uses you used them for, or just any kind of special occasions? Uh, growing up, my parents always saved aside ginseng root. They saved aside uh, heart, heart leaf. Heart leaf is good for the liver and also good for the heart. Hutendanta, dijatnaha, hotwadanta, hotwadishtani. That means their heart was a hurting or their head was a hurting. Uh, when they said hotwadanta, that means anything that made your body function. And that's what heart would, was good for. And also the spice wood, they put the spice wood in here. But you could always tell a medicine person, when you went to their house, you'd see all these spices and leaves and roots and herbs there. Whoop. So normally a little bit uh, it boils for, about how long do you normally let it boil for? I normally let it boil for like 30 minutes. Okay. You can see the little texture of the brown on it now, but it should be a little bit darker brown than what that is. And that's what you, and you can sweeten it with honey, wadulish, sweeten it with regular sugar, gochaja, and then Splenda or whatever kind of sweetener you've got. Dolce or jelly and honey. And, yeah. and with any kind of medicinal plants or teas, always check with your uh, medical provider uh, just to make sure it doesn't contradict with any kind of medication. Um, but a great spring tonic coming into springtime. 
And here we have our crawfish. Um, let's see, if, we'll just see if we can get a shot of that. Oh yeah, it's nice on. Do a little bit closer if you can see that there. Beautiful. And you can always put a little, you said, a little bit of salt and pepper if you wanted a little spice. Yeah. A little bit of Cajun, a Cajun mixture on that. And see how the crawfish went from green to nice red. Oh, beautiful. So that means it's well done now. Awesome. No. Thank you so much. I know I definitely learned um, a lot new today. I may have to try out my... Uh, crawfish um my crawfish killing skills uh this this weekend um oh so thank you so much uh, miss anita You're for welcome. coming today are there any other tips or um bits of knowledge you'd like to share with us before we go when you first go crawfish hunting make sure you grab the crawfish behind the back of the claws if you can figure out if you can go ahead and Cross them claws over, you're less likely to get pinched. If you ever get pinched, you know you don't want to ever go through that again. <laughs> no, definitely taken. So thank you for joining us today on behalf of the EBCI Communications Team, Cherokee Choices, and Miss Onita. Um, we thank you for watching, and please let us know your requests, um, your feedback. And we thank you for making Cherokee a healthier place to live, work, and play. Shki. Thank you.